Hi children, I am going to start new lesson. The title of the lesson is Expansion of Democracy. Now let us start. In previous chapters, we discussed how revolutions were led to establish democratic forms of government in Europe. And now in this lesson, we are going to learn how these revolutions were led in two countries, namely Libya in Africa and Myanmar in Asia. In these two countries, how this revolution was led for establishment of democracies. How these countries struggled to establish democracy, now we are going to learn in this lesson. Libya, it was colonized by Italy and it got independence from colonial rule in 1951. After a long struggle, Libya was successful to get independence from colonial rule. And when Libya got independence, power was transferred to King Idris by Italy. Italy transferred the power to King Idris and King Idris ruled the country with the help of a few rich and powerful families. Libya is a poor country in North Africa and mostly covered with Sahara Desert. All the northern countries in Africa they are covered with Sahara Desert which is the largest desert in the world and people in Libya belong to different tribes and their main occupation was agriculture and animal rearing. And these tribes were dominated by families of traditional tribal chiefs. And in 1959, vast reserves of petroleum were found in Libya. When petroleum was found in Libya, Libya earned much wealth from the sale of this oil in the international market. The king, who is the king? King Idris and a few powerful families enjoyed most of this wealth. And around the same time, a new wave of nationalism was sweeping in Northern Africa. With the feelings of nationalism, some young people, they wanted to establish a modern state in Libya that works for the welfare of the people. Because now all the resources were being enjoyed by the king and the, some of the powerful families. So they wanted to establish a modern state in Libya that works for the welfare of the people and which will not be subservient to the colonial powers. And they also wanted to bring some reforms in the country, like ending the oppression on women, to put an end to continuous war among the tribes for dominance, because all these tribes, tribes they were fighting among themselves for dominance over each other, and establish peace and unity in the country. And they also wanted that the profits from the oil should be enjoyed by all the people equally. And many people in Libya were also inspired by these nationalist ideas. In 1969, Muammar Gaddafi and a group of 70 young army officials, they took over the control of Kingdom of Libya into their hands. In 1969, Muammar Gaddafi and a group of 70 young army officials, they took over the control of Kingdom of Libya into their hands. And this group of officers called themselves as Free Officers Movement. They called themselves as Free Officers Movement. And as soon as Gaddafi and the other army officers took over the control of Libya, King Idris fled away from the country. He could not stay there and he fled away from the country. And thus monarchy was abolished in Libya. Monarchy came to an end in Libya when King Idris fled away from the country, monarchy was abolished in Libya and Libya was declared as a socialist Libyan Arab Republic. Libya was declared as a socialist Libyan Arab Republic and taking over of control by Gaddafi was completely supported by the army. When Gaddafi took over the control of Libya, it was completely supported by the army and this movement was led under the leadership of RCC. RCC full form is Revolutionary Command Council. And this movement with which Gaddafi came to power, it was led under the leadership of RCC, Revolutionary Command Council. And this RCC consisted 12 members from the military. And Gaddafi and the other army officers, they wanted to develop Libya as a modern country. When they came to power, they wanted to develop Libya as a modern country. 
now let us see how the libyan society was initially this libyan society was tribal society that means majority of the people were tribals and these tribals they were led by the families of tribal chiefs and these tribals they were more concerned about their own tribe always they were more concerned about their own tribe and regarding its honor they never cared for the welfare of all the people these tribals who were in majority in the libyan society they were more concerned about their own tribe and its honor rather than about the welfare of all the people and most of the people they were poor and they are nomadic nomadic because they were, their occupation was animal herding so in search of food and water for their animals they used to move from place to place so they were nomadic they were poor nomadic animal herders and who were also illiterate these tribals were illiterate and women were confined to parda system as you know muslims are always confined to parda system and in libya islam is the state religion so these were also confined to parda system women and were not allowed to participate in public activities and the new gaddafi's government introduced many reforms because they wanted libya wanted to make libya as a modern state he this government introduced many reforms and these reforms led to the rapid development of libya now what were those reforms nationalization of oil resources nationalization means bringing any organization or any company into the control of the government if it is under the control of the government that means it is nationalized so gaddafi's government nationalized all the oil resources if it is nationalized the profits can be enjoyed by all the people equally and he also introduced a program for extension of cultivation and he started giving irrigated lands to the poor workers if they are given lands they will start cultivation and once they start cultivation they will put an end to their nomadic life because they have to look after their cultivation nomadism will be put to an end and free universal education was provided to all the people including women free medical care was provided to all the people and distribution of share of oil profits among all the citizens and highly subsidized housing housing schemes were provided that means houses at very low cost were provided to the people and a major reform which was undertaken by gaddafi's government was to provide freedom and equal status to women women were now allowed to have property and business and take up jobs in the government also before they were not allowed to have property or to run any business or to take up jobs in the government they were not allowed now they were allowed to have property business and take up jobs in the government and as a result of all these reforms libya was well developed and average life expectancy also increased in libya from 50 years to 77 years it increased literacy rate also increased both men and women literacy rate it was over 90% even today it is 90% for men and women for both and majority of the people in libya were tribals nomads and illiterates and there were many restrictions on women and under these conditions it was very difficult to bring these people to take part in the democracy to make the people take part in the democracy it was very difficult in libya because most of the people they were tribals they were nomads and they were illiterates also and gaddafi encouraged the people to participate in public affairs he tried to encourage participation of common people in public affairs and for this purpose he created people's councils and also elected people's assembly in the center he created people's councils and also people's assembly in the center at the same time as a result of developments made in the society an educated middle class emerged in the society and they began to participate in these bodies these democratic bodies they were elected by the people so because these are educated middle class people who got education they started participating in these democratic bodies that is what are those democratic bodies people's assembly and the people's councils 
and when the educated people started to take an active part in these bodies gaddafi was not ready to trust these democratic bodies he didn't like this so instead he now created revolutionary councils he now created revolutionary councils parallel to the democratic bodies democratic bodies elected by the people and he now created revolutionary councils and these revolutionary councils were appointed by gaddafi and they were fully under the control of gaddafi and the rcc rcc means revolutionary command council both gaddafi and rcc were having full control over these revolutionary councils what are revolutionary councils they are created by gaddafi parallel to the democratic bodies democratic bodies they are elected by the people revolutionary councils they are appointed by the members of revolutionary councils they are appointed by gaddafi now all the important decisions regarding in the country they were taken by the rcc rcc means revolutionary command council and the members of this rcc were not elected by the people they were appointed by gaddafi just now i told you and these people people members who were appointed by gaddafi they were given the power to take all the decisions in the country what type of decisions they will take they will take only the decisions which are favorable to gaddafi's government and these decisions taken by rcc revolutionary councils they were to be implemented by the non elected leaders that is democratic bodies that means democratic bodies they are elected by the people actually they should take all the decisions but here the revolutionary councils were given the power to take all the decisions and the decisions taken by the revolutionary councils were to be implemented by the democratic bodies and as a result of all these people lost their trust and interest in these democratic bodies but the government tried to insist on people's participation the rcc used brutal armed force arrested all the political opponents tortured them and also killed many of them and freedom of press was not granted so that the people could not express their grievances to the media and also forming independent organizations like trade unions or other associations was not allowed and even the political parties were not allowed to function in libya a few powerful families in libya they controlled the government and the rcc actually gaddafi and rcc they were controlling the country of libya and a few powerful families in libya they controlled the government and the rcc that means they controlled gaddafi's government and also rcc and the oil companies also owned by the government they were also controlled by these few powerful families and dictatorial functions like arresting torturing just now we discussed they started arresting political opponents torturing them and killing them in large number all these dictatorial functions and taking away freedom of press all these helped these few families to consolidate their power more and more when such incidents occurred and once when such steps were taken by the government they helped these few fa- powerful families to consolidate their power more and more and now people started hating these family for their high handedness but they could not express it as there was no freedom of press there was rapid development in libya because many reforms were introduced by gaddafi's government there was rapid development in libya urbanization was increasing new job opportunities were created because of all these changes the tribal way of life slowly came to an end and now different tribes started living together mixing with the people in the cities and many jobs were available in government sector which controlled all the oil resources trade and industry and the educated middle class which emerged in libya wanted to take up business and industry but because of the high control of these powerful families and because of some of the government policies these opportunities were restricted to few people only and these educated people were not given that opportunity now arab spring what is this arab spring many of the arab countries they had dictatorship in their countries in the beginning many of the arab countries they had dictatorship and during the second half of 2010 that is by the end of 2010 many movements were led in these countries 
to put an end to dictatorship and to establish democratic governments in all the arab countries by the end second half of 2010 many movements were led in these countries in arab countries to put an end to the dictatorships and establish democratic governments in all the arab countries they were inspired by each other's revolutions and they also started similar revolutions to end the dictatorship and establish democratic form of government and it started with a small country tunisia in africa first it was started in tunisia it, it is a very small country and uh, spread to countries like egypt libya yemen bahrain syria it spread to all these countries also and it started like a wave in the arab countries and this revolutionary wave of demonstrations protests and wars occurring in arab countries came to be known as arab spring and it was started in december 2010 now let us see some of the changes in libya that took place in libya in cities like benghazi there were no civic amenities amenities means facilities i mean facilities like drinking water electricity all these facilities were not provided in cities like benghazi and there was unemployment on large scale many people were unemployed and there was political corruption also and people started to share their problems through internet and mobile phones and against all these adverse conditions there were peaceful street marches and demonstrations and the police tried to crush it down and gradually these protests spread to other cities also though the police tried to crush it down gradually these protests spread to other cities also from february onwards these protests took a violent turn and there were police firings many people were injured and some people took to arms and weapons also to protect themselves group of professional soldiers who left government's army they also joined these rebels they also supported the people but majority of them were ordinary people only like lawyers workers teachers students etc and all those who opposed gaddafi's government they came together to protest against it and security forces fired at the people and people that is protesters they attacked the government buildings and people made different demands the first demand was to renew the earlier constitution and along with other demands they also demanded for the establishment of multi party democracy in libya and gaddafi's government also gathered its supporters and staged demonstrations in his own support he also staged demonstrations a major civil war broke out between the protesters and the gaddafi's government civil war means a war which is not actually fought by using weapons but people fight by just abusing each other so a major civil war broke out between the protesters and the gaddafi's government and some army members also joined with the protesters finding no other way gaddafi used his army and air force to crush down the protests and many people were killed and many powerful countries of the world like united states of america all these countries they interfered in this they wanted to end gaddafi's rule and establish a government which is more favorable to them why they wanted a favorable government in libya just to have control over the large oil reserves in libya they wanted to put an end to the rule of gaddafi and install a government that is more favorable to them and these countries also supported the rebels rebels means people who were against gaddafi's government they were supported by all these countries and pushed libya into civil war and even the uno also uno means united nations organization also interfered in support of the rebels and uno declared libya as a no fly zone why it was declared as a no fly zone in order to prevent the government from using air force bombing against the rebels gaddafi's government was using air force bombing against the rebels to kill more number of people he was using air force bombing so to stop it and to prevent him from doing this 
the UN war declared Libya as no fly zone. Then he cannot use air force. So, however, the government <coughs> continued the air strikes. Gaddafi's government did not stop his air strikes, he continued it. And then France, USA, Britain, all these countries, they jointly used their air force to bombard Libyan government positions. They attacked all the government positions in Libya. And thus, people in Libya, they succeeded in overthrowing Gaddafi's regime. With the help of countries like USA, Britain, France, and even interference of UN war, people were successful in overthrowing Gaddafi's government. A new government was established and sworn in on 14th November 2012. In Libya, elections, free and fair elections were held. And in these elections, more than 100 political parties participated and 200 representatives were elected by the people. And Libya, a new, new government was formed and this new government was sworn in on 14th November 2012. And they also prepared an interim constitution. Interim constitution is a temporary constitution. Till the final one is prepared, interim constitution is prepared. So this interim constitution was also prepared by the people and it is possible that there will be a democratic government in Libya in the future. Libya may have a democratic government in future and now we have to wait and see how far Libya will be successful in establishing democracy in the country. Now, Myanmar. The second country is Myanmar. The previous name of Myanmar was Burma. Now, let us see how the struggle for independence was led in Myanmar. Myanmar is one of the neighboring countries of India, which shares a boundary with India on the eastern side. All the eastern states in India, they share a boundary with Myanmar. Like India, Burma was also colonized by the British. India was colonized by the British and like that, Myanmar was also colonized by the British. And from the beginning, Burma was a major supplier of teak wood, rice, minerals like tin and precious stones like rubies and sapphires, etc. From the beginning, Myanmar was a major supplier of all these things, teak wood, rice, minerals like tin and precious stones like rubies and sapphires to the international market. And Burma got independence from British rule in 1948. Just after five months of India's independence, Burma also got independence from British rule. And just like in India, a parliament with two houses was established in Burma also. Elections were held to the parliament and different political parties contested in the elections. In 1951, 1956 and 1960 also elections were held and at that time it appeared as if Burma too will become a democratic republic just like India because elections were being held at regular intervals. It seemed to continue democracy in the country but since there was no united political party in Burma, there was no united political party like in India. In India we had Indian National Congress and other parties which were very strong parties and such parties were not there in Myanmar. Since there was no united political party in Burma to lead the people of Burma, it could not establish democracy in the country. And another similarity between India and Myanmar was, I told you already that at the time of independence there were more than 550 princely states like Hyderabad, Junagad, all these were princely states at the time of independence in India. And it took few years to integrate all these princely states into independent Indian Union. Who was given this responsibility of integration of princely states? Sardar Patel. And it took few years to integrate all these princely states into Indian Union. Just like that, Burma also consisted of a large number of small states and ethnic linguistic regions. Just like in India, there were princely states, 550 princely states. Like that, Burma also consisted of a large number of small states and ethnic linguistic regions. Regions which were formed by ethnic groups and on the basis of language. 
till we continue in the next part